Well, hello everyone, it's Brother Donnie, Country Homestead Preacher. I'd like to tell you good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you may be seeing this. I'm going to try a new uh, uh, feature on our channel. I'm going to call it Sunday Brunch. And uh, I'm going to try it for a couple of weeks, see how people enjoy it. And I kind of recognize the gap on Sunday. Some people can't go to church on Sunday. Some people may not have a church to go to. So I just wanted to come on and give some encouragement, share a few things that's on my heart and maybe encourage you down the road a little bit. And, uh, you know, when we started our channel, we started out as a channel for homesteading because we had found this wonderful homesteading community, people that has the same interest, uh, gardening and farm animals and things like that. So we started our channel with the hopes of making connections and trying to document, um, you know, our, our journey into the homesteading. Well, it became apparent to me that, that really my niche in, and my help rather for the homesteading community, I don't have the homesteading skills built up yet, although they're growing. Uh, in order to garden and, and farm animals. And, and, you know, I point people to other experts who are way on down the road from where I'm at. And, but what I do have some skills is, is Bible teaching. And it's not, not that I'm the bestest ever, uh, but that is my heart. So uh, that's why our channel over the last really couple of months has been more devoted to Bible teaching, encouragement, devotions, to the homesteading community. Now, we will eventually get back to homesteading videos, and we're currently debating whether to, to do a, a total different channel or to do it on Country Homestead Preacher. But today, I just wanted to come to you, and I, I'm calling this Sunday Brunch. Uh, and it's not food related, other than the food of the Word of the Lord that we have. And uh, just wanted to get together and share a, a few thoughts and to talk about some issues that may be going on. And like I said, hopefully encourage you a little bit because the thing that I've learned in my 47 years is that this life is uh, difficult. There are, there are good times, but uh, there are many difficult, hard, and even sad times that we have to endure. And <clears throat> I, don't, I don't care what political spectrum that someone's on it would take a fool not to realize that the country that we live in as we have become accustomed to from maybe you know our upbringing or our grandparents or whatever that this is a far different country today and it's changing more and more and more every day and you hear a lot of people talking about the system of the world the the empire of the world, the, uh, the the people in the dark closets that's moving, shaking, and so forth. And that is there. And, and really how you boil that down is this, that in this world, in this life, uh, there are only two paths. That's it, just two paths. Either someone is on the path of holiness and righteousness, or either someone's on the path of the world. And the Bible speaks very clearly about these two paths. And it says that one path is a broad way. And that, of course, is the path that leads to hell. And, and, and the Bible also says what I believe is some of the most un, un, unfortunate, sad statements in the scriptures. It says that there'll be many that find that broad path. But then it goes on and says, narrow is the way that leads to God. So, folks, there's only two paths. Now, for, for those of us that name the name of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are different than anything that's in this world. And I think why it's uh, so difficult for many of God's people over this last year specifically with all this mess that's happened with the virus and the, the dear people that's, that's been lost and passed away. And then the church world has been shaken because 
not being able to meet uh, as, as a standard like, like they've been doing for, for hundreds of years. What has happened, it has demonstrated to us that faith in Jesus Christ, the living relationship that you and I have with the Lord, it is not contained in a campus or a building. That relationship is contained in here according to the scriptures. And I think 2020 has shown that people can still worship, people can still fellowship, and certainly people can still walk with the Lord even if they can't go into their building. Now, uh, for me, there's, there's nothing wrong with having a church building. There's no pr prohibition in the scriptures, nothing wrong with people congregating in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fellowshipping, preaching the word, taking communion, so forth. That's, that's, that's good things according to the Bible. The problem comes in is that when in people's life that we have let outside circumstances shake us, even to the spirit man, and this is what I mean, over the last 25 years, there has been a, a, a terrible shift in Christian thinking in some, and even in, in what's called a fundamental or someone who uh, it would be opposite of a socially conservative, a fundamental conservative. There's been a, a, a shift over the last 25 years. And that shift has taken place as a result of lines that, that have become blurred between our faith in Jesus Christ and what's going on around us. And I want you to know, folks, and, and you need to understand very clearly that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is outside the influence of any entity in this world. Now, what do you mean by that, preacher? Well, you didn't cause your faith. You don't uh, keep your faith, and you can't take your faith away. But this is what I mean. The so many of God's people today are shaken by the fact that the election went sideways, the virus has hit, economic troubles, and so many people has let it get even to the core of their faith. Beloved, if economics, if politics, if all this shakes your faith, then your faith, and pardon me for saying this, your faith is in the wrong thing. Because our living relationship in Jesus Christ is not based on any of that stuff. For if you go back and look at the history of the church and even back further into the Old Testament, you always see that God's people have difficult, hard, terrible times. And when we think about the apostles, for instance, and these was this this was Jesus's inner circle. These were the ones that walked with our Lord. These were the ones that spent time with our Lord. These were our Lord's friends. But yet, when we look, starting with Christ himself, and then we go to the apostles, up until Paul, we see terrible conditions that they had to endure. But yet, their faith was in the midst of that. So I guess what I'm telling you is, don't get to the place in your faith walk to where you believe that outside influences uh, can crush your uh, spirit walk with Jesus Christ. And if it can crush it, you don't have a walk with him at all. Because we walk in the heavenlies. The Apostle Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, not to put our focus on things that's on this earth, but put focus on things that are in heaven where Christ is seated. So we are spirit people. And, you know, it's, uh, it's discouraging to me as a preacher to look at fellow, and I'm just going to be frank with you, to look at many fellow uh, pastors and ministers who, who, who made statements similar to, well, President so-and-so, has to go in, it's God's will. And if President so-and-so 
has to has to go in, and if he doesn't go in, it's going to be the end of what we know is religious freedom. Let me tell you something. Can't nobody crush your personal religious freedom. They may can lock you up. They may can take our Bibles away, but they cannot do anything to your faith in Jesus Christ. Not do anything. Paul and Silas were sitting in a prison in the book of Acts, and they were sitting in prison being locked up, bound together, but yet God worked mightily, and they didn't have all these things. So my point is this. you got to fully prioritize and understand the, the preciousness, if that's even a word, the, the awesomeness of your walk with Christ. Do I believe in in that we should have freedom of worship? Absolutely. Do I believe that we have personal liberty, liberties? Absolutely. Do I believe that that uh, uh, if Mickey Mouse goes to Washington as president tomorrow, that it's going to crush the church? Absolutely not. The church exists outside the peripheral of this world. Hear me close. The church is not based on the things of this world. And Jesus told his apostles, he told Peter, he said, look, he, Peter had, had looked at him and Jesus had said, who do they say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Messiah. And Jesus looked at him and he said, he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And he wasn't talking about building on Peter. He was talking about building on Peter's profession that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And that's what we believe on. So I want to give you encouragement, you know, whatever situation you may be in, whether you're homebound, maybe you don't have a good local church around you, take the word of God, start feasting from God's word, find you some good preaching to listen to, and you continue in your faith walk. You continue in your faith walk because there's too many life disappointments, life challenges, life hurdles, that if you put your proverbial faith hat on circumstances around us, you're never going to have the faith hat on. This won't happen. I want to read you some scripture from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 30, and I'm going to start in verse 15. And this, the thing about God's promises, they're always, they're, they're never nullified. And, you know, when I think of all that goes on in this world, when you sit and you ponder and you think about things, when you start to lock into the goodness of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, it elevates you to a place of higher thinking. And it elevates you to a place of confidence and assurance. Listen to what the Lord says. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. This Bible says, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. You see, way back in the book of Deuteronomy, way back yonder, I'm talking about thousands of years, there was adversity. There was death. There was difficulty. But there was also prosperity. That's what he said. 16 says, in that I command you today, to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. But if your hearts will not turn, uh, excuse me, if your hearts turn away and you'll not obey but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Listen to what the Lord says. I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land where you're crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. Let me stop right there. People look at this and say, well, preacher, we're in the day of grace. Well, I understand we're in the day of grace, but that still does not uh, go against God's promises. There's always been a cause and effect. If you obey, God's going to bless. If you disobey, God's going to whoop. I like to use that term, whoop. Some people say a fancier term such as chastise. But if you obey, God's going to bless. If you disobey, we'll have to pay consequences. That's what he tells them here. 
But if your heart turns and not obey, and you're drawn away and worship other gods and serve, they only stop again. The, you know, we 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 read this sometimes, and we we think of little little idols like a, a, a Buddhist statue or a, 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 some sort of a little idol that someone may have, and and certainly those are are little idols. But what what is a false god? What is a idol? Well, an idol is anything that would lead you and cause you not to do what he just says, not to have your heart towards the Lord, not to obey the Lord. So that's anything, folks. It can be a uh, material possession. It can be someone that's in your life. It may be a family member. It could be a job. It could be a, a million different things. Idolatry comes in the form of anything that takes your heart away from serving and following Christ. I declare to you today, verse 17, that you'll surely perish. You're not going to prolong your days. You're, you're not going to go in to the, uh, your days in the land where you're crossing in Jordan. 19 says this, and, and you know this is how we know that God's promises never change. They, they just don't. He doesn't just oh, say, I got a mulligan. No. I call heaven and earth in 19 to witness against you today that I have set, listen to this now, I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Stop right there just for a moment. I want you to know, beloved, I can say it with the full authority of God's holy word, that every day that you live and you name the name of Jesus Christ, that day is set before you is life or death. And this Bible says, I call heaven and earth, I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. And then it says this, so choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. So how do we do that? How do we mentally, physically, every other way, how do we choose life in godliness? How do we do that? He's going to tell us here in verse 20. By loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him. Now, I'm not talking about uh, you, you're you out in the yard and you you have some self-permission or, or something, uh, some kind of voice that comes to you. I'm not talking about that voice. I'm not talking about where you have a dream and you have a voice. And, and I do believe that there ha there was a time when the Lord operated in voices and visions and dreams and so forth. But the book of Hebrews chapter one said then in the, in the uh, uh, former times, he operated through prophets and so forth. But now he has spoken through his son, Jesus Christ. This is talking about, at least for me, this is talking about obeying his voice by holding fast to him. You obey the voice of God. This is God's voice. You know, people go around and again, I'm not saying that people, the Lord can do what he wants to. He may can, can speak to someone in a certain way. That I'm not saying that at all. But what, what, what is clear to us is that people go around and they're constantly, they're, they're fretting about God's will. They go to the mountain. They go to the river. They go to the creek. They go to the ocean. They go to the garden trying to perceive God's will. I heard somebody on a YouTube video say they go to their garden so they can get God's will. Listen, you ain't got to go nowhere to get God's will. You open the book. This is God's will right here in this book. This is God's will. When you can do this will according to this book, then you need to start worrying about God's unknown will. But here he says, by loving the Lord your God, and isn't that interesting? He puts that in there twice. Because you remember he said it up here uh, in verse number 16, to love the Lord your God. Now he says it 20, by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice and by holding fast to him. That's how you and I choose life every day. We obey his voice. We hold fast to him. For this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Now, we know from Bible history that Throughout the Old Testament, the children of Israel 
they had the same kind of effect all the time. They'd obey for a little while, and then they disobey and get judged. They obey a little while, they disobey and get judged. They got thrown into Babylonian captivity, uh, and then in 70 AD, the Jews had the final rejection of Christ prior to that, and then the Romans sacked Jerusalem. They obeyed a little while, and then they disobeyed, and they got judged. How do we look at this today? Just because we are under grace, and I think people really get this out of perspective, People think because we're under grace that we shouldn't obey what God tells us. But listen, Jesus said it himself. He said, and it's clear as a bell, if you love me, keep my commandments. So this is a true statement. Now, I know I'm getting radical here. But if you disobey God, you are proving that you don't love Christ. <gasps> oh, Boy, that flies in the face of about uh, a lot of doctrine in a certain denomination that I'm going to not going to name. That 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 take easy believism and and think that oh we're under grace and we know we're gonna fall. But my Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So how do we prove our love for Christ by obeying? This is what uh, Deuteronomy says. By loving the Lord God, by obeying, by holding into him, by holding fast to him, by walking with him. And it takes discipline, folks. It takes discipline. Uh, you know, I akin certain segments of the church to being like cotton candy. Y'all know what cotton candy is, right? Cotton candy is this big poof of sugar that they whoop together and it's all puffed up. And, but, but really, when you get to feeling it, and when you eat it, it just dissolves. It don't have no substance in it, you see. Well, people are quick to put the good verses of Scripture out in the easy times. Oh, yes, God's blessing me. God, Jesus is my co-pilot. My father was a carpenter. All these catchy little trick phrases we uh, hear about Christianity. But what it's done because of a lack of biblical understanding and walking in realness with Christ, we have developed in some aspects, not every church, some aspects, this cotton candy Christianity that is fluffy. But then when you, when, when you get to really dissecting it, it just dissolves. And you know why that is? Because that cotton, Christian, uh, cotton candy Christianity is not built on Jesus Christ. It's built on the doctrine of men. I like to call it meology. You know, we've come to a place now in modern times in the modern church where people are scared of the word doctrine and scared of the word theology. And people will say, well, man, y'all always hearken on doctrine, always hearken on. What about the feeling? What about the, the closeness of the walk? Well, these dummies don't understand that doctrine lays down the foundation for the proper walk with God. And uh, that's what we have nowadays. That's why so many churches are more, are, are more um, akin to a, a concert or some sort of a social experiment than they are to, to, to being akin to Christ. Well, preacher, boy, you're really judging folks. Well, how are you supposed to, how are you supposed to look? The Bible also says you'll know them by their fruit. What am I supposed to think when I hear a preacher preach for 10 minutes and he's only read one scripture, he's told a story for about five minutes, and then he gives the invitation for the other 20 minutes trying to convince people to accept whatever false gospel he's taught. Oh, I hate to get on that. Folks, choose this day what you're going to do. Just like he says, I call heaven and earth. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you and your descendants may live That for you and your descendants. We're just a simple little small channel. I'm just a simple little preacher. I mean, I'm trying to make an impact and, and, and push people towards 
encouragement in Christ. And, and I'll be frank with you folks, uh, after pastoring for a number of years, honey wiping gets old, honey kissing gets old. And that's what the church has turned to in some aspects. They don't want preachers that's going to preach. They don't want pastors that's going to lead. They want a, a pimp preacher who is on call that if they got a sickness, well, I'll call them and pray for me. Or if they've got a disruption in the church, well, I'll call this one. They don't, they don't really want somebody to lead them. That's happening in churches all over the place. That's why in, in the former denomination that I was in, three and five, Preachers will quit within the first five years of ministry. And, and it's all linked to the fact that do people really want to choose life in Christ? Or are, are we just consumed with our own self? Are we just consumed with our stuff and us? Is that, is that the end of, of all us? You know... In, in churches, you have whole meetings about what kind of music you're going to have. You have meetings about what color pews is going to be. You have meetings about uh, uh, a, a, a million different things. But yet, the gospel call of the changed life usually goes uh, not said. We in America, and I do believe the Lord has blessed us in America, but we somehow think that we are outside, almost like that we're untouchable. But I want to tell you something. You, you've seen it in the scripture. If, if, if God's people will not choose life and walk with him, we'll suffer consequences. Now I'm no prophet, and I don't I don't perceive to say the the, the future of the what the scripture says. But I know that throughout history, God has placed people in authority that's taken God's people to hard places, and it's all been for the purpose of, of strengthening. And just like I said, cotton candy Christianity. When, when, when the church is full of cotton candy Christianity, when the hard times come, it's almost like pouring water on cotton candy. It's just going to dissolve away because there's really no substance, no root there. And this, and, and you can read about it in First and Second Thessalonians, the, the purging, if you will, the sifting, if you will, that takes place is to see what's left. And like I said, you may be in a church that is uh, of a charismatic thinking that, that, that believes in the, the health and wealth and, and all this kind of stuff. Well, won't y'all go do a, or, or believes that it's God's will for nobody to be sick and that everybody will be healed. Won't y'all go have your church services at the hospital? Won't you go to the nursing home? You know, why is there a hospital in your town? If you truly believe that, why, why is there a hospital there? Well, I don't want to leave you on a downer note. I want to leave you on an upward note, and that is this. That for God's people, for us to prosper, we simply need to hold on to him and walk in his statutes. So that no matter what takes place around us, no matter what hits us, no matter what transpires, we're holding on to Christ. Let me read that in Colossians chapter 3. I don't want to let it slip by us here. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. And, and some of my favorite scriptures. It says, If you've been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated in the, at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. You know who I'm addressing, folks? I'm addressing people that are not of this world. I'm addressing, as Peter says, strangers and aliens. 
I'm addressing people who walk in the heavenlies. And you should be encouraged by that. Do what the book says. Choose life and live and walk in his statutes. Well, thank you for watching Sunday Brunch. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I've, I've tried not to be negative, but sometimes you can't help it. It's just the way it is. You got to deal with the scriptures when, the, when they come before you. But if I can do anything for you, just let me know. Uh, I'll put my email address below. Uh, thank you all that's joined us for 10 Minutes in the Word. I want to remind you about our little website, 10minuteword.com. And uh, we are on Monday through Friday, 630 Central Time, as we're studying the book of 1 Thessalonians. would cordially invite you to that. If you believe this has been a blessing to somebody, send it along to them. Uh, it's my privilege to be able to teach the Word. Now, I'm not the, the, a scholar nor, nor a, 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 a theologian from the standpoint of being a trained theologian other than what God has done to train me. This Brother Donnie, Country Homestead Preacher, coming to you from Central Alabama. Hope you have a great day in the Lord. And until I see you again, I'll bid you farewell with one thought, that is that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.